The purpose of the following two basic examples is to work through our consolidation process and to indicate to you the difference when our NCI is measured at proportionate G versus at fair value. Now, when we look at our steps, step number one, we need to prepare our analysis of owner's equity purely calculation purposes. Step two, line by line combination, add assets, liabilities, income, expenses of our parent plus subsidiary. Step three, our elimination journal and all other pro forma journal entries to be able to calculate our NCI and if there's any goodwill. Step number four, eliminate our intra group transactions. Now let's briefly work through the information provided. Parent Limited obtained control over Subsidiary Limited on date of incorporation of Subsidiary Limited 400,000 Rand. Therefore, in the separate records of parent, parent will debit the investment in the subsidiary with 100,000 and credit assuming bank with 100,000. The statement of financial position for both companies are provided for the year end 31 December 2016. Profit after tax for the year end 31 December 2016 included in retained earnings was 15,000 Rand. Subsidiary Limited paid a dividend of 10,000 Rand at 31 December 2016. The dividend was paid cash and included in other income, profit or loss of the parent. Therefore, in the separate records of our parent, our parent debit bank credit other income. Now, they indicate to us retained earnings as at 31 December 2016 amounted to 45,000 Rand. Accounting policy, NCI, measured at proportionate share and the investment and in subsidiary in parents' records will be recognized at cost. Now, on the right side of your screen, you will identify I've included a timeline. Now, at acquisition date, year end 31 December 2016, therefore our previous year end is 2015. Now, when we look at the timeline, we are able to identify that our analysis of owner's equity will be divided into three. One, our at acquisition period. Two, our since period, which will be for the period since acquisition until December 2015. And number three, our current year period. When you look at the analysis of owner's equity, Number two, our since period, and number three, our current year. Now, guys, they've indicated to us that the retained earnings at the end of 2016 is 45,000 Rand, and they've also provided us with the profit for 2016 being 15,000 and a dividend being declared of 10,000. Now, we need to calculate our retained earnings at the end of 2015. Therefore, you should be able to reconcile your retained earnings account. Remember, you will have your opening balance plus the profit for the year, which is the 15,000 minus the dividend declared 10,000 and your closing balance. 45,000. Therefore, we are able to calculate our retained earnings opening balance being 40,000. In our analysis of owner's equity, in our ad acquisition, they've provided us with 80,000 share capital. Our retained earnings will be zero because at acquisition date, is the date of incorporation of our subsidiary. Therefore, at this date, our retained earnings will be zero. 80% owned by Parent Limited. Therefore, 64,000 will be allocated to parents and based on proportionate share, 16,000 to our NCI. Our parent paid 100,000, resulting in 
goodwill of 36,000. Now, what you need to identify is that our NCI is measured at proportionate share. Therefore, our NCI will not share in any goodwill. Then, guys, it's important that you understand your journal entries. You will remember that I've indicated to you in the records of parent, separate records, parent will debit the investment credit bank. Okay? Now, we need to consolidate. Okay? Therefore, if we consolidate, we add the parent's assets and liabilities plus the subsidiary's assets and liabilities. And this is our step number two. Therefore, when you look at this column, if we add the assets and liabilities, we still have included our 100,000 in terms of our at acquisition payment of our investment. But guys, do you agree with me? In this combination, we have also already included the assets and liabilities of subsidiary, therefore the equity. Therefore, this will be double counting if we include the 100,000 and the equity. And this is the reason why you need to take out this 100,000 via your elimination journal. And then you are able to recognize the goodwill. You need to recognize your NCI and the retained earnings portion. Okay. Now, guys, this is your step number three. We need to eliminate our at acquisition journal entry. And step number four will be to recognize any intra group transactions. The only difference in this example is that our NCI is measured at fair value. Therefore, when you look at our NCI's column, you will identify that the consideration paid line includes 20,000, which is 16,000 times 1 rand 25. Therefore, guys, assuming in this example, there is 16,000 shares times 1 rand 25, and this will be 20,000. Therefore, goodwill is allocated to our NCI. When you compare this to the previous example, no goodwill allocated because our NCI is measured at proportionate share. In this example, measured at fair value and our total goodwill will be 40,000. Now, when you look at our journal entry, we recognize total goodwill of 40,000 and our NCI at fair value. Now, guys, this is the purpose of these two very basic examples. I want to indicate to you the basic process and the difference between the accounting policies of the measurement of our NCI.